Section 4 of The Destination of Man by Johann Gottlieb Fichte Translated by Jane Sinnott This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org Chapter 4 Doubt Inquiry is Closed my inquiry is closed and my desire of knowledge satisfied i know what i am and wherein consists the nature of my species i am a manifestation of a self-determining power of nature whose operation is determined by the whole of the universe it is impossible for me to obtain an insight into my individual being in its foundations, for I cannot penetrate into the interior of nature. But I have an immediate consciousness of what I am at the present moment. I can mostly remember what I have been, and I shall learn in due time what I shall be. This discovery can indeed be of no use to me in the regulation of my actions, for I do not truly act at all. Nature acts in me, and to make myself other than what nature has made me is totally out of my power. I may repent and rejoice and form good resolutions, although, strictly speaking, I cannot even do this for all these things come to me of themselves when it is appointed for them to do so. Most certainly I cannot, by all my repentance, by all my resolutions, produce the smallest alteration in the appointed course of things. I stand under the inexorable power of rigid necessity. Should she have destined me to become a fool and a profligate, a fool and a profligate without doubt i shall become should she have destined me to be wise and good wise and good i shall doubtless be there is neither merit nor blame to be ascribed to her or to me she stands under her own laws i under hers it would therefore contribute to my tranquillity to subject even my wishes to that power to which my existence is entirely subject. Oh, these rebellious wishes! For why should I longer conceal from myself the melancholy, the aversion, the horror which seized me when I saw how my inquiry must end? I had solemnly promised myself that my inclinations should have no influence on the course of my reflections, and as far as I am aware, I have really allowed them none. But may I not confess that this result contradicts the deepest wants, wishes, and aspirations of my nature? And how, in spite of its apparent accuracy and the cutting sharpness of the proofs by which it seems to be supported, can i truly believe in an explanation of my nature which destroys every hope for which i wish to live and without which i should curse my existence why should my heart mourn at all and be lacerated by that which so perfectly satisfies my understanding when nothing in nature contradicts itself is the life of man only a perpetual contradiction or perhaps not the life of man in general, but only of me and of those who resemble me. Had I but remained content in the pleasant delusions that surround me, been satisfied with the consciousness of my existence without those anxious questionings whose solution has made me miserable, but if this solution be the true one, I could do no otherwise than I have done i did not raise these difficulties but the thinking nature within me raised them i was destined to this misery and i mourn in vain the innocent unconsciousness which is lost to me for ever but let me take courage should i lose all else let that never forsake me 
merely for the sake of my wishes did they appear ever so sacred or did they lie ever so deep in my heart i cannot renounce what appears to rest on irrefragable proofs but i may perhaps have erred in my investigation i may have taken but a one-sided or too narrow view of the question i should begin the inquiry again from the opposite point what is it that i find so revolting in the decision to which i have come to what did my wishes point let me before all things make clear to myself what are the inclinations to which i appeal that i should by necessity be either wise or good or foolish or vicious without having in one case or the other merit or fault this it was that filled me with aversion and horror the determination of my actions by a cause out of myself whose manifestations were again determined by other causes this it was from which i so violently revolted the freedom which was not mine but that of a foreign power and in that only a conditional half-freedom this it was with which i could not rest satisfied i myself that which in this system only appears as the manifestation of a higher existence i will be independent will be something not by another or through another but of myself the rank in which that system is assumed by an original power of nature i will myself occupy and with this difference that the modes of my manifestations shall not be limited by any foreign powers i will have an inward force a peculiar capacity of manifold infinite manifestation like those powers of nature but whose movements shall not be like theirs limited or defined by external conditions what then according to my wish shall be the seat and centre of this peculiar inward force not my body evidently for that i willingly allow to pass for a manifestation of the powers of nature not my sensual inclinations for these i regard as the relations of these powers to my consciousness my capacities of thought and of volition then nothing will content me but absolute freedom of the will by means of which i may act on and mould and move first my own frame and through it the world surrounding me my active natural powers shall be subordinate to my will and absolutely set in motion by no other force i will have freedom to seek a supreme spiritual good and a capacity to recognize it and if i do not find it the fault shall be mine my actions shall be the immediate result of my own will and of no other power whatever the powers of my mind and body determined and subject to the dominion of my will shall operate on the external world i will be the lord of nature and she shall be my servant i will influence her according to the measure of my capacity but she shall have no influence on me these then are my wishes and aspirations and they are wholly denied and contradicted by a system that has nevertheless satisfied my understanding instead of being independent of nature and of any spiritual law not self-imposed i am merely a definite link in her mighty chain if such a freedom as i have described be at all conceivable it is possible that a more complete and thorough investigation may discover it to me and compel me to receive it as a reality and to ascribe it to myself so as to afford an entire refutation of my former conclusions this is now the question i will be free in the sense stated i will make myself whatever i shall be i must then and herein lies the difficulty and indeed at first sight the absurdity of the idea 
i must already be in a certain sense that which i would become in order to become so i must possess a twofold being of which the first shall contain the fundamental determining principle of the second if i interrogate my consciousness i find that i have the knowledge of various possibilities of action from amongst which as it appears to me i can choose any one i run through the whole circle enlarge it compare one with the other and at length decide on one and this resolution of my will is followed by a corresponding action here then certainly i am in thought what subsequently by means of this thought i am in will and in action i am as a thinking what i afterwards am as an active being i have determined my existence in reality by my thought and my thought absolutely by previous thought one can conceive of any certain state of a mere manifestation of one of the powers of nature of a plant for instance as preceded by another intermediate state in which left to itself it might have assumed any one of an infinite variety of possible manifestations these manifold possibilities certainly exist in it but not for it since it is not capable of the idea and cannot choose or of itself put an end to this state of indecision this must be affected by an external cause which will determine it to one or other of these various possibilities this possible determination can have no previous existence in thought for the plant is capable of only one mode that of real existence in maintaining formerly that the manifestation of every force must receive its complete determination from without i took cognizance without doubt only of such as are incapable of consciousness and have merely an existence in the phenomenal world of them the above assertion holds true without the slightest limitation with respect to intelligences the grounds of this assertion are not admissible and it appears therefore over hasty to extend it to them freedom such as i have described is conceivable only of intelligence but under its assumption man as well as nature is perfectly comprehensible my corporeal frame and my capacity of operating on the world of sense are as in the former system manifestations of certain powers existing in nature and my natural inclinations are the relations of these manifestations to my consciousness the mere cognition of what exists independently of me arises under this supposition of freedom as well as in the former system and so far both agree but here begins the contradiction under the former system my capacity of sensuous activity remains under the dominion of nature and it is set in motion by the same power which produced it and thought has no other affair than that of looking on according to the present system this capacity when once produced falls under the dominion of a power above nature and entirely superior to her laws the office of thought is no longer merely to contemplate but to set in motion this capacity in the one case forces to me external and invisible put an end to my state of indecision and limit my capacity and my consciousness of it that is to say my will to a certain point exactly as in the plant in the other i find myself free and independent of the influence of all external forces putting a voluntary end to the state of indecision and determining my own action according to the degree of knowledge i may have attained of what appears best which of these two opinions shall i adopt am i a free agent or am i merely the manifestation of a foreign power neither appear sufficiently well founded for the first there is nothing more to be said than that it is conceivable 
in the latter i extend a proposition perfectly valid on its own ground further than it can properly reach if intelligences are indeed merely manifestations of a certain power of nature i do quite right to extend this proposition to them the question is only whether they really are such and it shall be solved by reasoning from other premises not however from a one-sided answer assumed at the very commencement of the inquiry in which i deduce no more from the proposition than i have previously placed in it there does not seem to be sufficient proof of either of these two positions the case cannot be decided by immediate consciousness i can never become conscious either of the external forces which in the system of universal necessity determine my actions nor of my own individual power by which under the supposition of free agency i determine myself whichever of the two systems i shall adopt it appears that i must do so without sufficient proof the system of freedom satisfies the other one kills annihilates the feeling of my heart to stand by cold and passive amidst the vicissitudes of events a mere mirror to reflect the fugitive forms of objects floating by such an existence as this is insupportable to me i despise and renounce it i will love i will lose myself in sympathy for another i am to myself even an object of the highest sympathy which can be satisfied only by my actions i will rejoice and i will mourn i will rejoice when i have done what i call right i will lament when i have done wrong and even this sorrow shall be dear to me for it will be a pledge to future amendment in love only is life without it is death and annihilation coldly and insolently does the opposite system advance and turn this love into a mockery the object of my deepest attachment into a delusion a cobweb of the brain it is not i but a foreign and to me unknown power that acts in me i stand abashed with my affections of the heart and my virtuous will and blush for what is best and purest in my nature for the sake of which alone i wish to be at all as for an absurdity and a folly what is holiest in me has become a prey for scorn it was without doubt my interest in these feelings and affections that induced me although consciously in the commencement of the inquiry which has driven me to despair to regard myself at once as free and independent and it was also this interest which has led me to carry out even to conviction an opinion which has nothing in its favor but its possibility and the impossibility of proving the contrary it was this which had hitherto restrained me from this undertaking from the attempt to explain my own nature and existence the opposite system barren and heartless indeed but inexhaustible in explanation will explain also this wish for freedom and this aversion to the contrary supposition it explains all my objections drawn from my own consciousness and as often as i say i find thus and thus it replies with the same horrible calmness that i say also and more than that i will explain why it is of necessity thus thou standest it will answer to my complaints when thou speakest of thy heart thy love thy sympathy at the point of immediate consciousness of thine own being and thou hast confessed this already in asserting that thou art to thyself an object of the highest interest now it is already known and proved that this thou for which thou art so deeply interested where it is not an active force is at least an impulse of thy individual inward nature 
it is well known that every impulse reacts on itself and incites itself to action it is therefore conceivable how this impulse must manifest itself in a conscious being as love as aspiration after free individual efficacy couldst thou change thy narrow point of vision in self-consciousness for the higher one of the universe which thou hast promised thyself to take it would become clear to thee that what thou hast named thyself love is but the interest which the power manifesting itself in thee has to maintain itself in this manifestation do not then appeal again to thy self-love which if it should prove anything would merely prove that nature in thee was interested in her own preservation thou hast readily admitted that although in the plant there exists a peculiar instinct or impulse to grow and develop itself the activity of this impulse is defined and limited by forces lying beyond itself bestow for the moment consciousness upon the plant and it will contemplate with interest and self-love this its instinct of growth convince it by reasoning that this instinct is not able of itself to affect anything whatever but that the measure of its expression of itself is always determined by something out of itself and it will perhaps speak as thou hast spoken and behave in a manner that may be pardoned in a plant but by no means in thee thou art questioningly a higher production of nature and capable of contemplating the universal whole what can i answer to this representation should i attempt to place myself in this much talked of universal point of vision doubtless i must blush and be silent it is therefore a question whether i shall do this or confine myself to the range of my own consciousness whether knowledge shall be subordinated to love or love to knowledge the one has but a bad reputation among people of understanding the other renders me indescribably miserable by annihilating myself in myself i cannot do the one without appearing in my own eyes to commit a folly nor the other without what seems a moral suicide the question cannot remain undecided for on its solution hangs the whole dignity and tranquillity of my existence i find it nevertheless impossible to decide and have absolutely no ground of decision for one opinion or the other intolerable state of uncertainty and irresolution by the most courageous resolve of my life i am reduced to this what power can save me from it from myself end of section four